have you ever wondered what it takes to run a county? These are the hardworking men and women that do the tough jobs that help keep El Paso County moving. This is Tough Jobs. Hello everyone and welcome to this episode of Tough Jobs. I am your host Scott Anderson and today we are out here at Household Hazardous Waste on the east side of Colorado Springs to give you a tour of a day in the life of someone at Household Hazardous Waste. But like with any good tour, we need a great tour guide and for that we're going to bring in our expert, Harry Harrigus. How are you doing today, sir? Pretty good, Scott. Good. Thanks for having me out here today. Really appreciate it. No problem. So I uh, was wondering if you could really quickly run through what we're going to be doing here today at Household Hazardous Waste. Well, what we'll be doing is we'll be probably assisting a few customers who Great. are dropping off their various and sundry household hazardous waste. Mm -hmm. We're also going to be loading up a few trucks. Okay. Uh, one's going to, uh, we're going to load up electronics. Second one, we'll probably be loading up uh, chemicals. Uh, oil-based paints. All right. Well, let's get to it. Let's go. All right. All right. So we did mention household hazardous waste. Uh, I see you're dressed up in what looks like protective gear. Is there anything I'm going to need to make sure that I'm safe as we go about our day today? Well, you're going to kind of have to look like me. Ah, lucky me. Excellent. So, so we're going to get you some Tyvek uh, coveralls. Okay. We'll get you a pair of leather gloves and some indoor outdoor glasses. All right. Very good. Eye protection. All right. Great. Well, let's uh, get to it here. All right. Well, here's what you're going to need. Wonderful. Let's step in here and change clothes. Thank you, sir. All right, well, I must say, I do think I look rather dapper, wouldn't you think? Well, yes, you do. Well, thank you very much. All right, well, I think our first load of the day is here. Well, let's head to the door. All right. All right, let me explain this procedure. Whenever yeah. we, we have something picked up, our contractor has things that they have to do legal legal wise okay before they can transport it and that's what david here is doing he's marking everything and uh it's cataloged here on a, on a manifest so he knows what he's taken mm -hmm. and uh and this is just part of the process before we start loading it into the truck so what is all this stuff what is he going to be hauling away today well today we've got uh acids and bases in these uh poly containers okay these here are light bulbs, uh, fluorescent tubes. Okay. And over here we have, uh, I believe those are aerosols. Okay. And, that, and then here we have our oil-based paint that's also going. All right, so we got David all checked in. What's the next step from there? Well, we'll get him loaded up. Okay. And before we hop on the hot rod here, all right. uh, I'm gonna introduce you to my friend. The marmot. Oh, he looks nice. Well, he keeps me nice and warm on a windy day. Excellent. So, so uh, do I get to drive this thing? Well, actually, unfortunately, no. That's probably for the best. It's it's best to have somebody <laughs> that's certified to do this, especially loading a truck. Okay. All right. Well, let's go. All righty. Go. Let's step into here. This right. is our flammable storage room. Great. And in the morning when we come in, because of course we close everything up the night before. Uh -huh. So what we're going to do is we open up our, our barrels. This is our liquid loose pack. Okay. Liquid items, but they're smaller. All right. Here's our propane, where yeah. we put all of our one pound propane uh, canisters. Okay. This is uh, cooking oil. Cooking okay. grease goes in here. Got it. And these two are our flammable liquid, hence the stickers. What are some examples of those flammable liquids? Oh, you know, paint thinners, uh, automotive fluids, gasoline. Okay. We also have a few other things in here that we collect. This is where we place all of our aerosols. Okay. When they come in. Yeah. And as you've noticed, we've chucked them as we call it. We take the caps and the buttons off. Mm -hmm. And that is a requirement from the vendor. Okay. 
And here we have, this is where our latex, or excuse me, our oil-based paint's gonna be going. All right. Uh, when we, we just swapped the box out yesterday, so we should be adding some stuff into here today. Very good. And here we have our smaller stains right. that we collect. Uh, so this is basically, uh, we spend a lot of time in here. Yeah. <laughs> okay, we have our first customer of the day. Oh, wonderful. So we push the magic button to get things started. Okay. Good morning. All the way forward, please, sir. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna check the customer in. Oh, great. Good morning again, sir. Okay, and what do we have today? Uh, just a bunch of these cans. Hey, no problem. Again. We'll get the card over there for you, and if you wanna just hand them out right there. That's it. That's it. Can great. that be it? Yep. Thank you much. Right. Have a great rest of your week, sir. Thank you. All right, this one has already been done. Nice. Now, of course, these are easy because you just pinch the little, and you take the cap off. Okay. But what's really fun, because sometimes you get these where, where the lid does not want to come off. So what we've learned to do, tap. Nice. Pop it off, and, and that's how that works. Most of the time. Most of the time. <laughs> we're going to wheel it in, and we're just going to go right in here. All right. Throw it in. Easy as that. Good morning. Let's see what we have here. Ooh, looks like cooking grease today. That's it. That's it? Okay, All right. we'll hold this right here. We'll get the door. You have a great rest of your week. And this is going to be rel relatively simple. All right. Just pour the contents of this right into that barrel. All right. Let's see if I can do this without getting it all over me. And you can toss the cap in that garbage can Little if cap you so would... desire. All right. There we go. And in. Oh, that's delicious. Oh, I'll bet something good was made with that. <laughs> <laughs> Where I lived quite a long time and I was looking at all this stuff and paint and all that and I said, damn, I gotta get the heads of this thing. Some of the safe stuff is heavy of this. And here's the difference. Any stain that comes in a metal can is going to be oil-based. Okay. Almost all of it in a plastic can is water-based. Okay. Water-based will go out here. All right. Yeah, there you go. I'll let you take that back. All right, so since I've been here, we've seen some uh, aerosol paint, we've seen some cooking oil. What's some of the strangest stuff you've seen since you've been working here? Well, we did have, a few years ago, we had an individual come in with a, about a five gallon Mylar bag. Okay, sure. And he handed it to me and I asked him, there was no markings on it, and I asked what it was and it was waste from his RV. Oh. And unfortunately, we don't take that. That okay. falls into the biohazard range. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I gave I gave him some options as to where he could take that, and he was happy with that. Okay. But uh, what are some other uh, things that you guys don't take? Some other biohazard waste, perhaps, that you guys don't. Expect? Well, we don't we don't take medications. Okay. We don't take anything radioactive, with the exception of smoke detectors. Okay. Uh, they have a small amount of radioactivity. That's acceptable. We can take that. Okay. Uh, we don't take from businesses. Okay. We take from households. Mm -hmm. What about something like uh, uh, old antifreeze? Antifreeze we can take. Okay. Automotive fluids, antifreeze, oil, brake fluid, uh, transmission fluid, we'll take those mm -hmm. uh, in a container that you can leave behind. We do not return containers. Okay. Okay. Uh, we'll kind of go around the bay here. All right. To, uh, and show where, where we put things. This here, of course, is a med sharps container uh, tote. Okay. And we have our sharps containers in here. Okay. We take two of these, two quart uh, containers per month per household, mm -hmm. and they just go in here. So what? What are sharps? I don't know what uh, exactly would be in that. Needles, 
the lancets they used for, for blood draws, okay. uh, occasionally EpiPins, mm -hmm. anything that basically is injectable. Okay. Uh, we'll go into uh, one of those uh, containers and we'll take that. Okay. And that is the only thing medical we accept. All right. Is, is just those. Okay. Over here we have this innocuous looking recycle <laughs> bin. Sure. What we use this for is for uh, fluorescent tubes. Excellent. As we come over to the other side, uh, the first thing you see is this big gray metal thing, and this is our scale. Some of the uh, waste that we send out has to be weighed. Okay. So we just throw it up here, hit the button, see what it weighs, write it on it, send it out for storage until they pick it up. Great. Uh, here's our lead acid battery uh, collection point. Okay. And we do take uh, car batteries, uh, marine batteries, and a lot of batteries that come out of uh, EPSs for uh, backup power for computers. Oh, okay. So, you know, as a, as a reminder, anyone bringing in an EPS, all we're looking for are just the batteries out of that component. Okay. So that's all we want, the component. Once the batteries are out, you can throw it away. Okay. So and here we have over here is where our small latex paints go. You know, the small samples. Oh, yeah. Yep. yep. We get a lot of those. Got it. And so this is the, the barrel it goes in. Over here we have a latex paint box. Okay. When we move latex paint and we send it to our vendor in Pueblo, this is how the boxes are set up. It's gonna, you're gonna have 18 five gallon on top if it's full. And this is a container that we use that we just put excess uh, quartz in. Okay. Because we do tend to get a lot of these. Okay. And these uh, stainless steel cages are used to hold our electronics. Okay. So someone brings in electronics, uh, this is where we're gonna put them. Okay, uh, what are some of the electronics? I, obviously we see some TVs here. What are some other electronics that you guys get in? We take uh, DVD players, CD players. Uh, we take TVs, uh, CRT televisions up to 20 inches. Okay. We take flat screens up to 40 inches. Okay. And those are both measured diagonally. Right. Uh, we'll take uh, printers, scanners, CPU towers, laptops. Okay, and and like with the uh, power supplies you were talking about, do they need to take any components out of those before they hand them over to you, or just uh, come as they are? They come as they are. We do recommend, though, if you do, if you're bringing us a computer and it has a hard drive, mm -hmm. take that hard drive out. But you know, it is private information. Right. Uh, if you don't feel comfortable, just drop oh, it sure. off here. Sure. All of our stuff goes up to Fort Collins where it's demanufactured and also to recycle the materials. Okay, very good. Here, what's next on the list? Well, the next is going to be loading the electronics truck with Reuben. Okay. And we'll get him loaded up and then we'll have to go weigh him when we're done with that. Back to the hot rod. All righty. got back from uh, loading up the electronics they had 19,000 pounds on there is that pretty normal that's pretty average okay wow that's, that's incredible uh, so today we've uh, helped out a few customers uh, we've offloaded some uh, some paints and some electronics uh, anything else that usually goes on around here well uh, we've got a porcelain container out there a dumpster for porcelain for road construction okay and that gets picked up about every six weeks to two months mm -hmm. uh, we also have our garbage dumpster out there that gets picked up every week our recycling bins for our co-mingled recycling program, which okay. is Wednesday morning, 8.30 to 11.30. Mm -hmm. And that's your paper, your cardboard, glass, right. aluminum, and tin. And that's that pretty much uh, rounds it up. Just one final thing. Sure. And the uh, appointment system, we do operate on an appointment system here. Okay. Okay. Give us a call. We, we do same day and uh, we'll get you right in. Great. Well, hey, thank you, Harry. Really appreciate you taking the time today. Thank you for uh, showing me around and uh, letting me know really why this is a tough job oh. here in El Paso County. It was really great. Well, you're most welcome, Scott. Thank you. Great, and thank you guys for tuning in. Be sure to tune in next time for the next episode of, of Tough, tough Jobs. jobs.